<laughs> Welcome. This is Chip Roasting. I'm Wally. I am somebody. I'm Brennan. I'm not Brennan. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. We're roasting some chips. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Oh, never mind. Never what is mind. up, uh, Hello, podcast everyone. people, chip roasters? Chip Whoa. Roasters is, that, is, that, is, that what, is that what we call our fans? I'm, chip roasters? I'm, I'm assuming chip roasters. The one, roasters. The one fan we have. <laughs> yeah. The roasters. <laughs> everyone, RJ is here. He is back. Yes. He's still in, he's still a, he's still been abducted by aliens. Yeah. But I he mean, uh he got connection this time, so. They gave me they gave me a very nice view. To use yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, was, I was about to say fantastic view. For a view like that on Earth, you have to pay like like top dollar, and they're just including it in in the whole package here. Oh That's, yeah, oh yeah. It's, it's very nice of them. Very considerate. And it's only only for like <laughs> what did you say? Only uh, one anal probing a week now, and, and you get that view. That's what they said, but you know, you can never tell. <laughs> Because sometimes they try to make it fun. It's like, well, I don't know if I really like it. But, you know, I found ways to get out of doing that part. I well, guess, you know, at least, the, time. the very least, at, le at least, you know, they at least got to buy you some uh, dinner first. No. Oh, but you I just threw something at Earth. <laughs> <laughs> what is that sneaking <laughs> across the sky? <laughs> uh, um, We have a lot to talk yeah. about today. <clears throat> controversies abound new star wars new dc but yeah let's start with the controversy actually you know what first first let's start brennan huh <laughs> not wanting to be pro <laughs> <laughs> brennan what are you watching yeah. these days are you still how's your how's your watch of rebel Geese going watching oh it's it is going phenomenally uh we just got to the episode uh, that uh, dog Guerrera makes okay. an appearance and is yeah. like, oh, this is the last he had a notion. We should uh, torture him, interrogate him for information, and then murder him. <laughs> and the rebels are like, we don't, that's, no, that's, that's bad. Work. Oh, saw Guerrera. <laughs> uh, so that was great. Ooh. Lots of great episodes. Been 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 watching that. Um, what else have I been watching? That's a great question. I don't know. I didn't come prepared for this. <laughs> I, I didn't have any prep time. Brennan, uh, you have two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough time. You need another like three days. No. RJ had a I week need... and he he's prepared. I, well, I need more time than this. I think. Like all questions need to be emailed to me like four months in advance here. So <laughs> Okay, noted. I will email you the questions I have for you in four months, mm -hmm. uh, uh, probably in the next day or so. So, uh, RJ, what are you watching? What what you've been watching? Um, I've been kind of watching a lot of things. Not gonna lie, Earth uh, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how could you not? <laughs> <laughs> um, but my hero, I've been keeping up on. Dude, like this. I I didn't get a chance to watch the past. I think one or two episodes in English or Japanese. Um, Japanese always. Okay, gotcha. I can't gotcha. stand the way Midoriya sounds. It probably sounds like every other main character in English. No, <laughs> no. So I much, can't remember. So it's been worse. too long. It, I watched the first horrible. five and a half seasons in English, and then they only had Japanese when I got to that point. So you think you think he's whiny in Japanese? Jesus, talk about <laughs> whiny little boom boom baby in English. Oh. Holy crap! But that um, I started. I started a this other one called tokyo revengers oh that's yeah I heard good. that's a good show yeah yeah about nice. a, a gangsters and that are all in middle school most of course of course um i mean but japanese high school i mean japanese middle school is basically high school so yeah and they're oh. all and they all look like they're at least 30 but they're all but we all know they're like 12 yeah they're between <laughs> the ages of like 13 and like 17 i think is the oldest guy okay right now but then there's the rival gang that's like all adults. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very anime. Yeah, it's. I mean, you kind of ignore the ages when you. They're one of the youngest guys is also the leader of the gang, and mm -hmm. his his nickname, which has been his nickname since he was like twelve, is the Invincible Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> what a nickname! Yeah, what a nickname. So that, and also, I tried to start. I tried to keep up with. Um, 
uh, Vin Vinland Saga just had mm-hmm. season two come out. Gotcha. Uh, so I've been trying to keep up with that, but nice. I, so much work. <laughs> um, I I so I've been waiting for My Hero Academia to come out. I was like, man, when is it going to come out? And I looked it up; it's been coming out since October. And I was like, well, let yeah. me catch up. So I caught up in all nineteen episodes. This, oh, week, no, no. this weekend, yeah. Um, Sweet. it did not give you a second to get into the season. It's like, all right, this massive war is starting in oh, yeah. literally right now, and that massive that war went even... on for 13 or 14 episodes, just about, yeah. And then they went right into the next shit, yep. Then, right, right into the next shit. What's up, Brent? Speaking of massive wars, I just remembered another show I was watching up <laughs> until recently, but I've, <laughs> I've just completed the series and yeah. it was phenomenal. I finished watching Avatar The Last Airbender for the first time. What a great show! <laughs> I still haven't watched it, but I keep, what getting, a great I keep show. getting told but... it's really good, but I haven't, especially with all the new stuff that they're gonna do with uh, the new studio that they just opened for Avatar. Oh, there's so much. Have yeah. you guys seen like the full like list of everything that they've got slated for the I have next not. like five years? No, but I know it's I've a I know it's a lot. Of it, it's yeah. insane. Um, I'm it's, it's, very it's... optimistic now that it's like I'm like, hey, this is like, yeah. I got into it at the perfect time because now yeah. like everything is 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 happening. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. And I it's... will say the one opinion I have about it so far is that I don't like that they're redoing the entire series in live action. Yeah. And um, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, they're spacing it out so much that it's like, look, it's gotta be know. better than the movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> it is kind of odd, but I am glad that, that they're like reclaiming it a bit. Cause after the whole last live action, what I've heard yeah, was the uh, absolute fiasco there. It's like, not worth watching. And like Shyamalan's it... air last, right? Yes. It was M. Night exactly. Shyamalan who did <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness, really. Uh, I've heard it's like one of the worst movies ever made. Yeah, I've yeah. not heard. That's I don't pretty... think a single positive thing uh about it. I think I was hanging out <laughs> with a friend and I mentioned to them that I was that like I was watching uh Avatar for the first time. And like I made some joke about how it was like I, I was watching like the live action movie in like instead of the show, and they gave me like some kind of like just just a glare, and I was like, oh yeah, I, I, I forgot this is <laughs> this is just like sore subject removed from people's minds and like uh, in entirely because it's that bad. Yeah, I've not heard good things about uh, yeah about that. But you know what movie I've, I've seen heard like good screenshots things. or whatever, and yeah. I'm like. And I'm like, it's, I'm like, that doesn't look anything like the show that I just watched. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a nice yeah. Shyamalan, so I mean, I don't know why you would make put him in charge of that. It's like, uh, who should we, who should we get to to make a live action version of this really great beloved show? M Night Shyamalan, let's do that. <laughs> it's a horror show. No, it's a kids show. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> alrighty then. <laughs> it's like putting Netflix and started in, in charge of uh, anime live action ad- adaptations. It's a terrible idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I guess we'll see how this new show goes. From what I've seen with like the the casting and how they're doing the pacing and everything, it looks like it it'll be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. I'm I, I'm not sure because when you do like a show to a movie translation or like a book to whatever, like there's different stuff you can do. But when you're doing just a, a show to a different show, like that direct conversion, there, it's like, well, what are you gonna change if you change too much you get like the same live action movie disaster yeah but if you don't change anything at all it's like what was the point of doing this again so i'm not sure exactly the line they'll walk there well it's like it's like when they remake a movie you know it's just like okay well what are you going to change why are you going to change it and what is the point if you don't change a lot i think that was the big thing with the uh lion king live action movie right yeah but that one, I think that one, I mean, they did that one like verbatim. That was like you were watching <laughs> yeah. the same movie over again, just animated different. And and, and I use the word live like action. Any facial expressions from the yeah. animals at, yeah. at all. That, yeah. that was used, a big problem. Too. I used the word live action with that one with like, because it's not a live Air action quotes. movie. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's, not. <laughs> it's CG. They just it's look 100% more real. CG. Yeah. I will say, um, seeing it, when I went and saw it, um, I saw it at a drive-in theater, oh. and I cried three times. So yeah, it was good. The music is what got me, so sweet, mm-hmm. sweet. 
Um, and it's interesting that this is going to probably come out around the same time as the Percy Jackson re- uh, live action show. Because oh, yeah, same, that's right. Same disaster happened there. The books were amazing. The movies were just, they were awful. The yeah. first one so wasn't bad. that bad. I think the first one, they just tried way too hard to fit. Right. And then the second give. one was really bad. That was horrible, yeah. But they like, should. and so they're going to try to redeem themselves through the show that's coming out at Disney Plus. And so it'd be interesting to see how that comes out, comes about. And it'll be interesting similarly yeah. to see how the Avatar thing comes out, except it's not based on books. It's based on a sh- the show. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, the controversy this week um, mm. was, was with the uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, a lot of people were bringing it back up, and a lot of people are saying, "You know what? This movie, this movie actually sucked." If you take away I, all of the wow, all of the Andrew and Toby, this movie is not good. And I didn't um, see any of that c- 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 controversy at at all. And I mean, usually, like, yeah, it's fine tuned in the controversy yeah, it, like that. Apparently, this controversy was happening. It was brought up a bunch of, by different TikTok creators. So, like, I figured we put on our two sets in way too late, like we always do. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and. <good> uh, <laughs> A lot of people were saying that without Toby and Andrew, this movie was was bad. It didn't feel like a real Spider Man movie. And as someone, and we've discussed this, you know, all three of us in the same room together. Now, how I didn't like the first two Spider Man movies because it didn't feel like Spider Man, but then I really, really liked this one, and I stick, I stick to it. I think this is the best MCU Spider Man movie we've gotten so far, and it still yeah. is, even if you take Toby and Andrew out of it. Yeah, yeah. Like I've always viewed like his a. Uh, Appearance in Civil War and like the three movies as like his origin story in the MCU and it kind of makes like a perfect origin story for him like you don't have like the the whole like spider biting him thing and starting to you know get all his powers like in a typical origin story but from becoming just like a kid with powers to like a superhero really it is like the perfect story for him and like this the, the third installment I felt really gave him a lot of characterization. The last kind of like step he needed into all of that, into finally like owning who he was, owning his responsibility, mm-hmm. and all that. So like I, yeah. yeah, I just like the movie a lot. Like, I mean, sure, like all the cameos and stuff were awesome to see, but even with all that take. In a way, I still think the movie works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know what people are talking about. I don't know how you could say that this was a bad movie. I could see, I will say I could see why some people might like find it like kind of overwhelming with all of the different villains and all, mm-hmm. all three Spider-Men that we've ever had. But if you, the way I'm thinking about it is, is if you look at Spider-Man 3, for Tobey Maguire's movies, it's pretty much not the same thing, but the kind of the same feel where it's this hero has been mostly established. The public knows who he is and he's finally admitting his true full feelings for his significant other. Mm -hmm. And um, it in it for both movies, it doesn't end up working out in the end. Um, what I think a lot of people might have a problem with, I guess, is the amount of story that they try to pack in for Toby Maguire ones. It's like that one was like it felt really rushed trying to get through the backstory of all three main villains of the story. And then to have them all come together at the end, it was like, hold on, you're just throwing stuff at a dartboard and seeing what sticks. Mm-hmm. But with this one, you got, I mean, wasn't it, it was a full six like villains over Something the span like five of, or six, yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But the difference with this one is at this point, as long as you've seen all of the Spider-Man movies, you know, you already know who these characters are coming into mm-hmm. it. So it's like, okay. So all of this is just it's mostly like fan service, but in the way that you know fan service is supposed to be done. Because right, that's yeah. all the Sinister Six comic books were back in the day. They're just like, oh man. Spider-Man has all these villains all in the same city. <laughs> Let's make them team up and make them beat his ass. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. I, I think I think if people because I, I can definitely see like what kind of ca- critics would be saying that kind of thing to mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, you got who, who what, which main villain am I supposed to be hoping 
you know, comes out on top and beats Spider-Man or which one, like, who am I supposed to be focusing on as the main, like, who's the main villain? But mm-hmm. there is no main villain. If anything, the main villain was uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man himself, just with his own, like, inner conflict with, you know, being a hero in the first place mm-hmm. and being a public hero too, as, as well. And then all the consequences that come with that, losing May, uh, losing MJ and his best friend, but they still have each other. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I I think if people would just take it as a, this is a kid dealing with very adult things. Yeah, you know, yeah. and he still is a kid. He's still in high school. I mean, even yeah. though, even though those five years went 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 by, I mean, he was gone in that in that in those five years. I mean, he right. Um, but then I'm well, <laughs> not in high school anymore because they graduated. Oh, that's anyway. right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, the or whole, like eight, graduated, like cause right, he just right. Had to take like the GRE or whatever instead because like he's just no longer enrolled in high school, which is <laughs> yeah, that'd be the most yeah. frustrating thing. <laughs> Technically, they're college college students. That's right. So. I, I, that's yep, right. Yep, yep. But I mean, it's still really, really young, 18, 19 years old. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, going through, mm-hmm. you know, losing. none. All three of them are not allowed in a bar unless right. they're in. The bar. So, <laughs> right, right. I mean, oh, and he, he, goes, he goes through a lot in that movie, and he really becomes Spider Man. I think, I think the phrase that Spider Man is most known for the great with great power comes great responsibility is embodied mm-hmm. in this movie. Oh and, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, yeah, I, I can see why people think, oh man, this movie was actually good. They're just playing on your nostalgia. I'm like. Sure, but like actually watch the movie with some critical thinking skills and you'll realize right. that, you know, this movie's a lot deeper than just just the, the nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. Because what I feel so many other Marvel movies and stuff do, like, is 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 they just like have a character, they get powers, they go on a short adventure, and then bam, they're like an established hero in like the MCU now. Mm-hmm. Well, like mm-hmm. Spider-Man, it actually felt like there was a lot of time before he became an established hero, and he finally is. But it's like he earned it by going through all of that crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yep. And we and we and uh, by the end of it, we got a really cool Spider-Man suit and a really good mm-hmm. indication of where the sh- where where his storyline is going. Yeah. Um, and it may yeah. be a few years, which we've we've beat that to death. And how Marvel has mm-hmm. kind of been like, oh, here's this really awesome thing in a couple of years. <laughs> But um, you know, there was one interesting. It sets thing. it up pretty well. Mm-hmm. There was one. Yeah, there was one other interesting thing mm-hmm. I, I saw, like right after No Way Home came out. There was a deleted scene. I don't know if I've talked about this with you guys already, but there was a deleted scene um, where Andrew Garfield's uh, Spider Man goes back home, mm-hmm. like he gets back to his universe after the movie, because you know they send everybody back and. Right. The whole time you realize, oh wow, the whole time he's been dealing with this that like dark and brood and stuff that he he mentioned earlier in the movie, mm-hmm. uh, where he's like, I went through like a really dark time. He's still going through that. Mm-hmm. He hasn't like come out of that yet. This just happens at all right into the middle of it. Hmm. Um, Interesting. I had not seen that. And the what so basically what happens is he he ends up just falling into the middle of the street. And um, he overhears some kid like screaming for help and he's getting beat on by a bunch of bullies. Mm-hmm. And all you see and hear is Andrew walking up. Like you hear you hear his footsteps and you, the camera like pans down to his feet and he's just walking towards him. And then it like just pans out and all you hear is like just he's beating the shit out of these kids. Mm-hmm. And you hear the other kid like the one that was being attacked in the first place is like trying to tell him like hey man you're like stop stop you're gonna kill him and then you just hear the punches just get wetter and wetter and he's, it's like he's just like basically beating them to a, a little pulp. that's and a then, dark scene yeah and I then guess you there's see a reason they, they, they deleted it yeah yeah quote, unquote, but then that's that's not the end of it and then when it pans back in like it does like kind of like a 360 of like the neighborhood that it's around um but when it pans back in it pans in on the on his back mm-hmm. and you kind of see like a little black little bit of like um uh, like tendrils start to come out of his back oh. like little tiny basically the venom he's he's had the symbiote this whole time oh wow interesting yeah interesting. oh man so and it was more interesting about that is that during this last announcement for all of the like the Marvel movies that are coming out. Yeah. They also announced that Spider-Man 
uh, amaz the Amazing Spider-Man three is like officially in the works. Okay. So, oh, what? So, we did, yeah. We did not. Oh, we did he, not catch he's that. Getting, that's, that's, that's big. I did not, not hear about that. that. Hold on. Yeah. Not only that, but I don't know if you guys saw the the cast announcements for all of the movies that are coming out. Mm -hmm. Um, the Secret Wars has it specifically states that it's uh a uh, black suit spider-man that Ooh. is that andrew carfield is going to be but so is so is tom holland because he's getting the venom symbiote from somewhere else but venom well didn't eddie didn't, brock yeah i'm sorry oh um, no, you're good continue tom, tom hardy's venom tom hardy's venom is technically from amazing spider-man's universe so they're right gonna right how to tie all that in interesting <laughs> I unfortunately cannot find anything about the Amazing Spider-Man three being confirmed here, which is really weird to me. If it actually was confirmed, because like I know a lot of people have been They've hoping been for that for it, a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah. Especially right after the movie came out, um, which was like almost like a month, a year and a half ago. At this yeah. Point. Which is well, the, wild. The thing, came out at the end of 2021. Yeah, the thing I saw where it was like it said it was um, starting, well not starting production but like starting casting or whatever. Hmm. Um, Weird. It was from a, It was. I know it was like a mostly credible source. It was a um, what was it? It was a Marvel, it was a Facebook page but it was run by one of the writers for one of the comics that's uh the oh, huh. interesting. interesting but um yeah it's everything looks crazy it yeah. always looks really crazy um speaking of crazy let's uh let's flip to the other side we'll get we'll, we'll go into news now we'll flip to the other end of the superhero spectrum with what was for so long a, just a giant mess uh, the dceu <laughs> over the last <laughs> week or so has uh, announced uh their plan for the dceu uh, which in, which uh, <clears throat> which includes the chat the you know it'll come up to I believe the next movie I don't want to know what the next movie is oh Shazam and the one after that then it's gonna reset a Blue Beetle if I if I, oh, if, really? I read, well, if I read that see, correctly or if it's or is it so gonna go up to those four and then reset it's a little more complicated of course it's so, um, DC <laughs> yeah because the way. Yeah. Yes, they're restarting. They're going to start with chapter one. Ah, well, gods and monsters. The way James Gunn kind of explained it, mm -hmm. uh, he kind of did it in a way where I was, I was like, yeah, there's someone at Warner Brothers who's not letting him like completely start uh, over, but like, because kind of how he how how he described it is like all this stuff kind of takes place in the DC. EU still, but mm -hmm. then with like the Flash movie, they're gonna kind of they're gonna kind of reset and undo things with the Flash movie and Flashpoint and all that. And and with that, I've heard a rumor. I don't think it's hundred percent like confirmed, but I, but I heard a rumor that there were a lot of cameos and stuff filmed for the Flash movie. Yeah, and mm. since they filmed them, they've they recently decided to rip all the cameos out, and and like they're making new cameos that'll tie into where dc actually is like is is heading now which if so at, at least that'll kind of give some like like it'll it'll make things even more concise and easier to, to understand moving forward don't know how well it'll work but like he t talked about like a uh, shazam and aquaman like they would both kind of they're they're still in like the, the DCEU and he said the Flash will kind of reset things and then Blue Beetle comes out after the Flash but I'm not sure if Blue Beetle will be like the first installment or just oh, a okay. leftover thing I think from was, uh the slates the way the graphic made it look like it was just kind of like a leftover thing it was like it was the Flash there's another movie I think it's, Sh it's Shazam Flash Aquaman Blue Beetle and then Aquaman and it, and the, mm. the way it had the reset it was between the Flash and Blue Beetle, mm. and then we get Chapter One: Gods and Monsters, yep. and then there's a, also a fantastic the, name. I I oh, want to yeah. say that I love that like he's giving names to the arcs mm -hmm. as they're starting to to like come out. It mm -hmm. it 
it, it feels like a great decision feels very like comic book kind of vibes with yeah. like yeah. having just like a short title summary of what the arc is right and then i could have sworn gods and monsters was like from the comics if not the comics and like the, the animated um stuff that they've been doing right well, and then uh the current teen titans run the the Batman and Joker franchise, the Batman and the Joker franchises, they'll all just kind of be their own thing. And the CW, what's the Superman and Lois? They're going to be there. Yeah, they're going to be going? a place called in, yeah. in something called the DC Else Worlds. Yeah, or something. Which I also oh, okay. Which they did I, that I, in the comics also. I see what they're doing. Okay, yeah, they're, yeah, like, they're basically doing the whole. They're just redoing the comic book Flashpoint thing with the new 52 and just trying to do recreate that. Yeah. Okay. Week. Yep. Okay. I figured you guys would be a little bit better with explaining this. So if you yeah. guys could, cause I, really I don't like really know that much about DC. If you guys could like kind of take canon, over here, but yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and kind of talk about the movies that's coming out. Yeah. Like, and the, shows too, because animated yeah, stuff will be included. They're kind of doing in my mind, what Marvel should be doing, doing like this, like this whole time of like all the other Marvel projects, like, making them canon within the scope of like the multiverse and all that, but they just haven't been mm. like DC actually is doing that. They're saying, Hey, go check out all of our other projects, but just know that they won't tie in here. And they're doing it. The, they're doing that by giving it like the else world stamp. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I'm not sure how that'll actually look in practice, but it gives me hope that like they can have this like cohesive universe but still do fun projects that explore things outside of that, which will be phenomenal. I, I think personally they should just do it how the they were doing it with the animated movies where they had like a set animation style and that's how you knew it was connected. These couple of stories were connected. Yeah, yeah. But each one was like its own thing. Like the they did the Injustice thing. Um, that was after the video games, but um what was another one the doomsday they redid that for just for the animated version of it because they've done that like three times now um but but each time you know it's all been it's all been great one of my favorite animated dc things that they they've done was uh batman uh by arkham by gaslight or something i can't remember but it takes place in victoria the victorian age and the main villain is jack the ripper so yeah sweet sweet i'm not gonna spoil that i'm not gonna spoil who it is the twist of who it is is crazy um but you guys should watch that i really think sweet. the the animated dc stuff is i think that the live action should just do it that way just do all these one shot stuff and then you know say that they're connected by the like the multiverse or whatever but not have them actually keep interacting with each other because then it's mm. just going to be like the whole mess that they tried to do in the first place. It's just going to, yeah. Yeah. They're going to have to keep doing it over and over. Again. Yeah. 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 Cause like, like Marvel, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to have kind of like isolated stories, just the way it's, it's like even split up in the comics. I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but like all the media I've, I've ever consumed from Marvel. It's like, you can take things just kind of by themselves here, not really have them, interact even if you do have like like a big cohesive universe but for dc every time you try to make like a, a bigger story it always feels like you just have to bring in so many elements of like what's going on there as uh, as a whole because like the three big heroes of batman superman and wonder woman they represent so many different aspects of the universe that you have that you have to bring in kind of all their stuff and make them uh com compatible which is really challenging uh to do if, if you're just trying to tell these like individual stories so if they so if they've come up with a way to like do all of all of this cohesively i'm excited uh to see all of it because what I've seen that I think does it almost like the best in 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 my mind for someone who like kind of knows DC but is 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 always willing and able to learn more because I don't know everything that DC has is uh, Young Justice was a phenomenal show 
and if they're able yeah. to c- kind of do with like the movies and shows that they have kind of what young justice did and i'm hoping young justice stays around with like else worlds like renew it for season five please <laughs> um yeah. then like that would be great <coughs> yeah i uh yeah i i I think if I think if they do that, they'll be staring in the right direction because it's just getting too much. I'm starting to lose faith. I really, yeah, yeah. I wanted to give up, but then they released Batman and um, Harley Quinn show on HBO Max. Both of those I thought were really good. So you know, they they got me by like this much. <laughs> One more mess up, and that's it, DC. I can't oh, take man. it anymore. <laughs> yeah, they're they're, yeah. they're like they're super hit and miss, and. Having James Gunn at the helm, hopefully, will do will help. But I mean, yeah. I mean, God, yeah, it's it'll so be super interesting to, to see the direction play. that they go in with, like what characters r- remain from the old universe and which ones do not. Because I mean, for uh, like, so we know there'll be a new Superman. We know there will be a new Batman. I'm pretty sure new Batman was uh was 100 percent confirmed. It's 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 been alluded to. For a while, but I'm pretty sure they're like a hundred percent confirmed. Well, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be Robert Pattinson because he was part of that elsewhere. Yeah, 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 decision. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like I'm talking about uh specifically a uh, Snyder oh, okay, gotcha, individuals gotcha, gotcha. to here. Um, but okay. then like, if you decide to hold on to like Shazam and all that and keep Shazam around in the uh, James not. Gunn verse. Or whatever, then it's like, well, he's interacted with Superman. So is like, is that is his movies no longer canon, or like, what's this whole thing? And even like a peacemaker who I know is sticking around, he's interacted with Aquaman and and the Flash, like specifically. So if they recast them, it's like it gets really tricky of like what's canon now and what's not. Unless you go down the whole multiverse, or like not multiverse, but uh, well, I, I guess multiverse is just like the flash point, like resetting the timeline thing. But it, that's yeah. where it gets really tricky of not being able to just do like a, a full wipe because there are so many projects and everything, like ones that worked and ones that did not work. It's like, where is the line? Ex- where exactly is it getting drawn here? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, we will continue this conversation in just a second. We'll kind of discuss the uh, the exact timeline of yeah, movies the timeline, and stuff. But uh, first, we got to take a take a take a break because Zoom sucks. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be time back for an ad read, an actual ad read. Yes, uh, yes. This time, exactly. If I am correct in that, and you can tell it's an actual ad read because it is not by me. <laughs> it's not made up on the spot. Uh, so we'll be right back. Drivers, start your engine. Introducing the NASCAR No Bells Podcast, presented by Wolfgitter Entertainment. Every Thursday after the Daytona 500, the video available only at Wolfgitter Entertainment, audio anywhere you listen to the podcast. We are back. Thank you to uh, the, the uh, who am I putting first? Uh, the NASCAR Know It All's podcast for sponsoring this episode of the show, even though they have no idea that they're sponsoring it. So nice. <laughs> and you. now we're back. <laughs> you were wrong before. First, we were gone. That's and true. Now we're back. And now we have returned. Yes. Okay. So cool. the DC. So what? So what? What does the lineup look like? Because I don't really. Re- I did. I have not seen it. Yes. So the so the first an announced project for the official new DC extended universe is an animated series called Creature Commandos. Okay. And it's an animated what? series that uh is that revolves around military superhumans and these characters will first appear in animation but uh, then will also appear in live action as well and <laughs> uh, they're just going to have like a back and forth thing where you're going to have animated characters that become live action go back to animated and then live action become animated and just they're going to move all all around the board but this is all canon to one universe or one story 
Interesting. Is this, so that's the first one. Did they? Was there anything said about like what characters are gonna make an appearance in that? There or? was an image that was shared, and it's not on this website, which is super helpful, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was an image that was shared. Let me see if I can find that fast. Uh, but yeah, it looks it's. It's a, it's an interesting start. I was expecting for the DCEU, what they chose to start with first would, would be like a big bang, like Superman or Batman. It's what always what's been tried before. But yeah, this is very different. That might be a positive thing because I know every other time they've tried to start with Superman and Batman, it's gone like horribly wrong. So, <laughs> uh, what makes you say that other than the bad Batman and Superman movies? <laughs> Yes. So, RJ, can you tell us, because you seem to be oh. more in tune with the comics. Can yeah, you tell us like what... Who who was in the creature commandos? Because it seems like it's a because when you asked, you said you kind of kind of made it seem like it was a kind of a changing roster. It looks well, like Weasel is in this picture. <laughs> so from the Suicide Squad movie, that's what it looks like. I <laughs> oh I, boy, okay. I have no idea. Um, if, uh, can I, mean, I share pictures in the Zoom? Chat. I don't think I can. I don't think I don't it's, know about it's, the chat. it's letting me share pictures. If you want to, share, if you want to share your screen, you can go ahead. Okay, cool. Let me. Do I? Uh, do, do you have the permission? Um, that's a great question. There you go. Now you do. I, I do. Sweet. My computer is being very slow, so I'm just gonna save this image separately and hope it'll not freak out on me when I'm doing um uh, multiple things all at once here. All at one time. Yeah. Computers are. Um, I have noticed that your computer has been slow. Mine. Yeah, it's it's because I have it hooked up to an extra screen here, um, and it is not liking that I have it hooked up to an extra screen <laughs> right now. It, it, it runs so fast and it's by itself as soon as it has to like do two outputs. It's like absolutely not, absolutely <laughs> not. Okay, here we go. So this there is the lineup for Creature Commandos as announced by. By James Gunn. Okay. Not 100 percent who all of these people are. This guy uh on that is Weasel. Uh, the right here yeah. that looks a yeah. lot like uh Weasel. So of uh, for those of you who cannot see what we're uh, looking at because you are listening to a podcast as, as an audio medium for whatever reason, you can just <laughs> look up the creature commandos image and uh look along. With I've actually here. never seen any of those guys. This must be like a new. <laughs> That's really funny, actually. Like, uh, this skull fire guy looks really familiar to me for some reason, but I'm not sure if I'm just confusing him for somebody else or if I've actually seen him somewhere. He looks like um the guy from uh the suit the first Suicide Squad movie. What, I... what, is, what was the name? El Diablo or something. Hold on, I think I just realized who I may be uh, mistaking him for. Yep, I'm pretty sure this is who I uh, was mistaking him for. Let me save this image quick. Um, now let's see, if I open this up, will you guys be able to see my new screen or will it still be the old one uh do you see the new image now or is it still, no, the, it's old still the old one still the yeah old one. okay then let me share uh it now how about now do you guys see the the nope. new one now nope yeah. oh yeah there we go. Ah, the space cook from, that's from Scooby. <laughs> I actually think that's what I'm taking him for. <laughs> Dude, that's that, that was a good one. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, uh, it's it is a very interesting start. Not sure the exact direction this will take us here, but this is the first un announced project. It looks interesting. Yeah, interesting. Say. Is if that Frankenstein's wife that. and Frankenstein? It looks to be that way, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, and I, I can't tell in this picture exactly if she's busty or not. It looks it. No, yeah. He's, and he's definitely ripped. 
So. Oh yeah. And uh, RJ, you, I, I, I'm sorry, I was a bit distracted. Do you, you, do you know who all those people are? No, I've never no? seen any of these Sweet. guys except for the flame guy. He looks and like, like I said, yeah, him and Weasel play. Uh-huh. So if if it's not, but I don't think it is El Diablo. That they, I don't know if they want to. I don't know. This, I mean, it looks cool. All it of does this look looks cool. really cool. I like the, I, I like the art style. I, yeah, I don't know how I would feel about this being live action though. But, I wonder if they're gonna have the same actors do the voiceovers as the ones you're gonna play them in live action. Yes, that, uh, that was oh, one yeah. thing that uh, James Gunn has said. Like he 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 said, well, for the most part, uh, the plan is for if you voice an animated character, you will also act in live action as that character, and if you act in live action, you will voice that that animated character he said that's what they will uh always uh sh- sh- drive for here don't mm-hmm. know if if they'll hit that all the time or not but gotcha. we will see yeah uh, that, that's interesting for sure because i know a lot of voice actors will say how difficult it is to voice act yeah and that a lot of the like regular actors aren't all that good at translating it mm-hmm. so that'll be interesting to kind of see how that comes out because some yeah, might yeah. be really good at the voice acting and some might suck at acting and some might yeah. suck, be good at acting, but suck at voice acting. So it'd be very interesting. Yeah. What well, I'm hoping this will kind of allow here, like, cause usually what happens like is like, you just get some huge celebrity for like the on-screen movie or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then if you, if you have them voice act, they're just like, not great at, at at voice acting so i'm hoping this means like what they're kind of aiming towards is like having some like uh like more obs- obscure actors who are created at, at, at voice acting uh-huh. ch- choosing them above just some 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 big name so i'm hoping that's what this means but so does that mean mark hamill see. <laughs> that Mark Campbell's done a Mark Campbell could that very great... well be <laughs> both. He can do both, obviously. Yes. Uh, and so, and right. also, how many characters will D. Bradley Baker play? <laughs> 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 because I mean, that's 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 the prime example of him not playing <clears throat> or him, the, of uh, them being played by two different people. D. Bradley Baker is all of the clones, and yeah. so is uh, oh God, I can't remember his name. The guy who plays Boba Fett. No matter. It is what it is. I don't remember his name. I apologize. But uh, anyway, so that's the first one. Uh, What's the second? The next one is Waller. And it's a show that will follow Amanda Waller between the events of Peacemaker Season 1 and Peacemaker Season 2. So I'm looking forward to this one. Yes. Yeah, okay. it it is, which makes it more confusing because, like I said, Peacemaker has interacted the with goes, yeah. both the Flash and and Aquaman here. Um, but That's what we get and then the yeah, and then it like <laughs> ties back into like the to like the Suicide Squad movie as well. The which, Suicide Squad, mm, the, the Suicide yeah. Squad, okay, yeah, the Suicide Squad uh, which movie, canon? which then <laughs> it's like is is Birds of of prey canon and it's like it's, it's like you know just tracing back it's like what does this mean for like everything here that's where it gets really complicated he somehow but, made uh, it less confusing and more confusing at the same time yeah right yeah. <laughs> um yeah but yeah it's a show that that follows uh amanda waller she's this still being played by the same actress who has done a phenomenal amazing job here so far in my opinion and i'm excited yeah. for this show because like this is a really good place to start and in, in my opinion like smaller scale but amanda waller is terrifying mm-hmm. yeah. so uh, someone without powers oh yeah mm-hmm. absolutely so i am very excited for that one that one is confirmed as live action okay i'm pretty sure so uh yeah Okay, and then uh, the the one kind of question I guess I I, I have for that show because it's supposed to take place between Peacemaker seasons one and two, kind of to do with the events of Peacemakers season one, mm-hmm. is like I'm hoping they don't fall into the trap that like 
Marvel fell into a lot repeatedly, almost intentionally over and over and over about like <laughs> making everything be required watching in order to understand something else. Yeah. Right. I hate that. Like, like I, I want your experience to be enriched if you've seen all of the, the other stuff here, but not like a mandatory thing where you will like not be able to understand. Like, like even what uh, Star Wars has done with the book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian. Uh, oh, yeah. Overlap where like in the book of Boba Fett, they basically completely changed like the events of what we're going to see in the Mandalorian. So it'll be interesting. But James Gunn has been doing pretty well in all the stuff I've seen him make. So if he's saying this will work so far, I trust him yeah but... yeah <clears throat> I, I, cool i don't i don't know how big of a role she has in the comics rj maybe you can speak more to this but she's she obviously she's played a pivotal role in the movies um and i know she and in the, the two episodes of the newest season of harley quinn i watched she was introduced but i did not Ooh, get waller any, yeah but i did oh, okay, not get yeah. any further because I, our hbo subscription ended so mm. ah i got you i know from I don't know much about Waller from the comics because what I could tell, she's more of a, like, she's more of a, I won't say side character, but Mm -hmm. she didn't take up a lot of uh, comic book time. I would say her movie and uh, cartoon presence, especially the Justice League Unlimited shows, Mm -hmm. um, those were those and then the Batman show are where she really shined. Her character, at least, John. Um, in my opinion, at least for especially for our generation. Um, but it'll the the character, the actor, the actress they have playing Amanda Waller now. I think is the best person to have be doing this show. Oh yeah. Um, if they were to try to like switch it up and switch actresses or anything, it would be annoying. <laughs> um, I haven't I haven't seen all of. Peacemaker season one, and I didn't know that there was a season two, so oh, I'll have a lot yeah. to catch up on. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, yeah, that season sounds two's pretty. Out already? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it's it's not oh, yet. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> it was announced a while back, and then I remember when like all the cancellation news was going on of like, oh, Su- Supergirls being canceled, Bad Girls or, or Bad girl, super yeah. woman, super girl. I don't remember the which which show it was, but when that one was canceled and mm-hmm. and uh and if Backer was 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 canceled, James Gunn had tweeted out it was like no, like Peacemaker into is safe. It's still happening. Now we kind of know why because he was about to be put in charge of a uh, right things <laughs> there. But yeah, there is no confirmed release date. I don't think yet. Oh, well. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And then uh, uh, the moves on. Real, what was your Saturday? I was just gonna say that that's it's, it's exciting to see that all of that's going on for mm-hmm. the Waller show, Peacemaker mm-hmm. show. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because I mean, that that show, in my opinion, at least, was phenomenal. So I'm very excited that we're about to see more in that same vein, especially more that deals with Amanda Waller here, because we haven't really gotten like. Amanda Waller has been all over like the DCEU recently, but we haven't really seen a story yeah. like focused on her. She's just been like a character who's doing all the secret ops stuff in the background here. We yeah. we'll finally get to see her like as the lead. I hope, I will say, I do hope that it's a, a little bit more serious. The Waller, I hope the Waller show is a little bit more serious than yeah. um, Peacemaker just because having Waller, having Amanda Waller as like a, in a comedy, I guess, just kind of seems wrong. Yeah, when yeah, it yeah. kind of, it kind of takes away from what her character even is. She's supposed to be like, like, not, I won't say anti-Batman, but like, it's like, she's the dark and brooding, but for a different reason. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah, she, I mean, it, she it won't hurt seems... to have a... Oh, Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say like, and like all the comedic shows and stuff that she's been a part of or I guess the show and the movie that you know were very 
comedic in a lot of ways. She was always like the very dark and serious grounded part of all those ins- installments. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I have hopes that her show will keep, you know, that part of her like all alive in that same vein. Yeah. I just don't want it to be like a like they make her like I don't know try to act some kind of fear. I've, yeah. I've seen it happen before and it's just as long as they keep it to you know either I'll say the peacely, peacemaker is the limit. Peacemaker is the limit and if you go any more comedic than that then it's like alright I don't want to watch it anymore. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that I think that leads to a question yeah. that you know with, with this kind of DCEU reboot um, something that Marvel's made really famous, and I know DC definitely tried to copy, but didn't do very well successfully. And uh, even I mean, even Star Wars tried to get on in on it on in Episode Seven. Um, is is the balance of seriousness and co- comedy? How, <clears throat> just speaking ratio, in the you know, just give me a ratio. How much comedy do you want included in the overall tone of the DCEU? Uh, compared to how much seriousness? Because it seems to me that DC's kind of always been the more serious older brother of Marvel. Uh, especially mm-hmm. the movies, uh, you know, thinking back to Dark Knight and stuff like that. Um, but what do you want to see, you know, with the DCU moving forward? Like, how much comedy do you want to see compared with how much dark brooding do you want to see? I think so. The the I'll say this: the Shazam movie, the first one. I don't want that ever again. I don't want that amount of comedy that's trying to be forced to be mixed with something serious. Mm-hmm. Um, because you can't have that and then also have a character like Black Adam, which by the way, that movie was garbage. Zero out of ten. I didn't even <laughs> Oh yeah. It. I could not get through it. It was just no. Wow. Um, Interesting. The yeah. Like, way that they I gave that movie the- a strong five out of ten, <laughs> I believe was mine. So But see that that movie I think is a perfect example of what happens if you're trying to make a serious character you know, any kind of comedic or, Mm -hmm. you know, or I won't say any kind, but what happens when you take it too far? Mm -hmm. Because uh, the Black Adam that I know is not a bumbling idiot. He knows how to use a door. He's not just going to blast through a wall just because he can. Um, Yeah. Probably the stupidest part of that movie is they tried to make him like a hero character almost where, where from what I know about his vibe, that's like not really who he is am i, mean, I right not, about that or am i wrong he's not i won't say he's not a hero but he's also okay he's not he's like not a villain it yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll say this I'll, I'll i'll say it like this he his whole thing or his main thing at least from the comics that i've read about him and the, the other media that i've seen him in he's always been more about i'm gonna do whatever it takes to protect my people and the people of conduct and you know anything that comes oh, against me is going to be what i'm fighting so but for them to do it like that where it's like you're making the justice league look like villains and it's like i could kind of if you're doing it from his point of view then i guess that makes sense but they made it to where they were like oh we're gonna kill you i ain't never known a justice league that was gonna kill you bad guy if they you know yeah if they didn't need to because all they had to do was be like hey so what's your problem oh i want to i want to take out the terrorists that are you know enslaving my people again oh okay cool let me help you with that (laughs) yeah yeah. what the justice league is supposed to do i thought right so Mm -hmm. you know but if you take it going back to that question if you i it's okay to have comedy in a serious movie Mm -hmm. but you have to do it to where you know it fits. It, you can't just shoehorn it. It's like, oh yeah, this guy just got brutally beat to death because of some emotional uh, scene that was going on, and then five seconds later, you move into a, a poop joke. I can't. I just can't get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. I get. I get. I understand what the comedy is for. It's to you know try to ease the seriousness, but right. You're kind of taking away the immersion if you're right. gonna be switching back and forth the whole movie way. Just yeah, you know, find a comfortable medium and just stick with that. Or yeah, just don't try to be too serious. Are they trying? Did Deadpool ruin all that? Did 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 Deadpool make you know DC go out and say, "Hey, 
we can make this really <laughs> serious, gory ass motherfucker kind of funny. Even though like Deadpool's whole thing is that like is that he's just like super fucking meta. See that see that's the I think that is a big mix misconception that has kind of messed up how people look at um comedy versus seriousness when it comes to the stuff like that. Cause if you look at Deadpool, at least in um his like most popular comics, mm-hmm. those comics are not very funny. They are very serious. Interesting. Yeah. Um Wilson Wade Wilson is very complex character that Mm -hmm. what they've done so far is a very good introduction and i'm really hoping with this next movie that they dive a little bit deeper into what makes way wilson way wilson Mm -hmm. um but that's that's a whole nother topic it's like like what you were saying you know dc tried to take what you know okay they saw deadpool he did all this all this gore all this you know really heavy stuff but then he's also his character is the only one that's like taking the whole thing seriously that's like yeah. you can't put you can't make that and translate it to another character from another universe from like another mm-hmm. you know another universe and make it the same thing if that character origin not originally but if that character it doesn't make sense for him to be written that way you know yeah well i'll absolutely say for me I take on the question here is there's not necessarily like one balance of humor humor or tone that I want, mm-hmm. but I'd probably love to see the most that like Marvel has just not been able to do well at all. That DC, if it happens as James Gunn is describing it, hopefully will be able to do well is give each character, each movie, each project, their own story style their own tone they're all their their yeah. own sense of humor make them all feel unique because what marvel loves to do is just like find a style of humor that works and copy and paste it to every single new character they introduce and then it mm-hmm. kind of just turns this whole bizarre s where like dc tried to find something that worked and then copy and paste it but it was this like dark brooding tone almost where uh, they made like j- just like everything from like the the visuals to the overall tone were just um like a mess. And then characters that weren't supposed to be funny work, they're doing the inverse in in different areas. And and if they can find the right balance, where you have like a Batman who's dark and brooding, and a Superman who's like more light and and optimistic, and like you know these. It was the side squad cast characters like that, that have like all the (laughs) humor and jokes and all that. And like, you know, have all those unique (laughs) uh, styles. We're able to still tell one cohesive story, Mm. but like all the, all, all the elements you say, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in the mood to watch a comedy. I can watch this installment. Hey, I'm in the mood to watch a drama. Hey, I'm in the mood to watch an adventure. And there's like, you know, different movies for each of those vibes instead of just, you know, one kind of bland kind of what marvel has where all the movies yeah. are kind of the same yeah i know more and marvel's can... tried to address that lately i think um they're slowly trying to i i, I just feel like kevin feige is just holding marvel back from being what it wants to be, be like because because yeah. like a um, miss marvel i will say has been the most like visually yeah. unique project they've, they've had in a while and, and like i said before you know there was like uh in an in, in interview with some of the creators told me that visual style and they were like yeah we actually had more plan to make it more visually unique but kevin feige said absolutely not it has to look yeah. like marvel still and it's like no it doesn't you're making those <laughs> rules you're making them up and it's and, yeah. it's and it's all the worse for it here yeah yeah i could definitely yeah i could definitely see see what you mean by that brennan um i've i've never I never really thought about it like that. And now that you say it, where it's like they kind of do kind of go with the same visual, you know, or style to kind of keep everything. But I feel like in a sense, it's not, I won't say it's like holding Marvel back. I just think if they were to try to do it too different, then they would, they're trying to, I, I guess it's, it seems like they're trying to appeal too much to 
what the fan what the fans think that they want i guess mm -hmm. yeah you know yeah. because if if you think about the uproar of how many times they've had to how many times fans have been upset by something and then you know it just ruins the whole movie because just because the fans are upset about it and it's like mm -hmm. yeah i i can, i can understand what you mean yeah um i think projects like she hulk and miss marvel and moon knight um, when you get a diverse group of people behind certain projects, you'll get more variety. Whereas, you know, kind of the, the same people have kind of been at the helm, the same type of people been at the helm of all these Marvel movies. Um, and mm. I think, you know, maybe even maybe even a shakeup of the people just under Kevin Feige could help that. Um, and we, we've got a little bit a little time with that without a Marvel project. Uh, the, 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 like it's been. Yeah, it's been it's been some time. It's and, been like uh, what, like it's been a couple months. Is it? What was That's the last thing? I can't months. The last thing was the, was the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. That was the end, Which, of, oh, end of November here. So yeah, I it's still... it's it's been just over yeah, it's been... two months. Yeah, that's so... kind of the longest that it has been, which is super weird to think about that we've had so much Marvel <laughs> yeah, for so long. That's true, but I feel like that's kind of a good thing though, because mm -hmm. you know I did I did see Kevin Feige say that they're going with quality of projects over quantity because they mm -hmm. cut back um some of the stuff that they announced it's like some stuff yeah. they've reverted to like the the uh armor wars that was supposed to be i think a show and now it's, yeah, a, movie. it's a movie i'm so, so they... glad they finally realized that because like they've messed up some shows before it's like you watch the show and you're like this should have been a movie they just made it a show because they wanted to Fill out the show stuff mm. so that they can actually like we actually talked about what that is with, best the, now. with Falcon and the we Winter talked Soldier. about that with yeah. the Captain, Captain, yes. America. Captain America and the Winter or Soldier, the, yeah. yeah, the Falcon, yeah, yeah, Captain whatever, like, Falcon like, like, the, like the Winter Soldier, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> that sh could have been a movie, it would have been such a fantastic movie, and they kind yeah. of flubbed it by making it a show and they just mm. messed up like the pacing of a lot of areas and what was really a beautiful st story kind of got messed up by the fact that they kind of shoehorned the sh show format in there when it should not have been. And, and it was yeah. a little different with that show a lot because they had a pandemic. So, I mean, he wasn't going to make the money that they probably wanted to make at the movie theater. Yeah, that's true. So there's a bunch of different factors that went into that. But, but I mean, you know, for better it's the same. Worse, it's the same, same concept, at least. Right, that at least right. this time, they're, you know, they're actually going to do it seems like the right thing because mm -hmm. while I would love like a long project of the armor wars, depending on where they're going with the story, I think a movie is the better idea mm -hmm. just because, you know, I'm going to be honest, Don Cheadle as Brody is good, but I think they could do better than that. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I, what, was it, I, uh, was it Cuba Gooden Jr. at first? So who yeah, was? but he was he was a big baby about how much money he was getting. He was wanting more money than Robert Downey Jr. was getting for not being the star. Yeah. So so you know. Now he's missed out on quite a lot. So Oh yeah. I mean he would have he gotten, gotten, gotten paid better in the long run, but he's you know, got money from is. the Empire show. Oh, still, that's right. I so. forgot he was in that. Yeah, yeah he's fine. So, he missed out, but he's yeah. also fine. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And that that that's Hollywood for you, right? <laughs> Yeah. But um anyway, back to DC. Yeah. So the <laughs> next project announced is uh, the first movie of the new slate and mm -hmm. that is Superman Legacy. Wow. Okay, so, so we're going back to Superman, which Yes. Bold so it'll be the first uh It'll be the first movie. It'll be our introduction to whoever the new Superman is. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll focus on a Superman. It doesn't say it here, but I'm pretty sure you said it's 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 like a Superman in his in his early twenties, who's kind of like just starting out. So kind of like uh, in Tom the Holland same right? age demographic that we are in the. 18 oh, yeah. to 45 age range. We're not getting more specific than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's but, interesting though, because that that the description that you get that you gave, Brennan, was so vague that it makes me think that just going off the title, legacy, what if it's not 
like what if it's not Clark Kent? What if it's Superboy that they're going off? You know, that is interesting. I don't know if it's I mean, yeah, I don't I don't know if it specifies Clark Kent. So that is really interesting, actually. Because it just says, like you said, it just says a Superman in his early twenties, and what other Superman do we know around that age that would have any problems? You know, like that. That's really interesting. I, and the, the only thing I can think of is, at least leading off of the Teen Titan show, is Superboy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe Superboy Prime. Maybe, oh, yeah. yeah, maybe Superboy Prime might be coming into the canon. So that would be cool. So this, this is kind of <laughs> where it gets interesting because, I mean, we've, I mean, it just kind of goes along with Spider Man and Batman. But what we've seen in the last couple of years is that we didn't get a direct origin story for either of those two characters in recent reboots of the character. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wondering if they're going to go the same route here with Superman, where they, you know, we know Superman, we know his origin story, so just throw him right into a story, like they do with Batman and Spider-Man. So we yeah, that's to see that. Yeah, and that is kind of what it's kind of like from, like, how he described that. Mm-hmm. Uh, James, kind of, of, like, you're seeing this Superman character kind of, like, already established but still trying to like work a lot out so Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, that definitely sounds like super boy to me because interesting i mean come just coming here's a storyline i'll go out real quick just real fast pace he comes out of the teen titans one of the teen titans is dead and he feels like it's his fault and uh clark is going to be helping him but like feel like a hologram thing or hologram training, training or something, and then he's gonna. I don't know. It's gonna lead into something that has to do with the peacemaker, maybe, or maybe the Waller show. Maybe he gets recruited. Oh, that'd be interesting. Sweet. Um, so we're gonna finish. We're gonna finish this up next. Um, because after the ad, but break? I just I just upgraded right. to pro, so we should never have to do this again. Nice. Um, so Sounds we'll finish this up, and then we're gonna talk about the rumor that is surrounding one of the shows or one of the movies, and then the, we're gonna talk about rumor. Star Wars Visions, and then the Bad Batch. Yes. Oh, so I I forgot about the Bad Batch. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be back in a moment. I promise. After and we have this another real ad. Short ad break. Yes. yes. Code on this computer. All right, we are back. Thank you to myself for the ad. Go check out my new single. It is out uh, everywhere you can download songs. Uh, we are back now. Uh, Brendan still does not want to be probed. RJ is still in space. Uh, no, I still <clears throat> do not. Please. I, I, I don't know how this would come up in conversation, but just don't. That's just a flat rule. And uh, I am still in this apartment, surrounded by two yes. trash cans. So, so the next project, next project announced BCE's was oh, Anterns. A new Green Lantern project. I don't mm. think we've had a Green Lantern project in been some time. quite some time. Um, yeah. It looks Other very than interesting. The... I don't necessarily like how James Gunn described it as a top show, because I feel like you need to look at Green Lanterns as more than that. And there's been okay. a lot of no, there's space cops. stuff the cops have <laughs> done recently here that I don't think you'd want to make that comparison here now see he described it as 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 a bunch of police officers on earth so we're gonna see they don't have it's funny that all of this you know it's not funny that all this stuff is going on it's really horrible but yes it's interesting to see that but then also see that uh compared to the green lanterns because in my opinion if we're being honest if you want to go look at the comics they're more like real life cops than you might think. Really, really interesting. It's kind of bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, at, at, at least when we, at least when you look at the the guardians of the Lantern Corps. Yeah. The little blue guys. Um, they're kind of fucked up. I'm not gonna lie. 
uh, fucked up Smurfs running running the cops. Yeah, they um, <laughs> I won't say I won't say that they're racist, but they definitely are racist. They definitely have <laughs> they definitely have some reservations about humans. So uh, okay. the fact that there are that so side. many, yeah, there's uh, the fact that there are so many human Green Lanterns to them is like. Uh, what the fuck you that's know. really i mean so you're saying that 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 this show could take like a gritty realistic turn and uh an interesting but <laughs> uh, yeah difficult to I watch away if, perhaps i think if if they're going Ugh. in you know a kind of direction that you know would be appropriate i guess would be to say would be to show awareness to how bad it can be mm-hmm. when you have an entire core of cops run by the same like 10 12 beings over the span of eons sure. uh how corrupt things can get eventually because if i mean just looking at this looking at the story of sinestro he's a perfect example mm-hmm. corrupt cop gone bad um and then ends up becoming a game a gang leader you know that's that's that sounds like so um and i do know yeah. for the lantern show james gunn directly compared it to another hbo police theme show and i don't remember which one that one was what is it the wire no it was like oh. two words Blue it blood? Is two words <laughs> the wire <laughs> <laughs> um hold is on Blue Bloods the... i don't Think oh, so. Blue, Blue, that would that would that would be a pretty good comparison. But both are cop shows, Blue Bloods, and but one takes place in New York, one takes place in Baltimore. I've heard the Wire is like one of the best shows of all time, but I've never watched it. Uh, um, so my, maybe True Detective. It may have been. Oh, True Detective. okay, that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. I got. You. I think I did see that. See that. Same, so something that, that we've learned today word. is that the word "the" is not a word to Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> it's an article. <laughs> Articles are only technically words. <laughs> um, but so what I'm most interested in is there's two things. One, can they make a good Green Lantern product project? A product. Is this live action or animated? It is live action, I'm okay. pretty sure. Mm. Okay, so that's gonna that's be hard to do. And then two, which Green Lantern will they use? Oh as, as the like the main They're using t- two of them. They're using, using Hal, them. Jordan Hal Jordan and, and... It's it's not the guy that, that everyone hates. It's the other one. I can't remember the the Kyle Rayner. No. Uh, There's Hal Jordan, John, Kyle Rayner, John Stewart. It's 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 John oh, Stewart. Oh, the black dude, the black Green Lantern. Yes, yeah, yeah. So that's what I was curious about if they're going to use the black Green Lantern. It's been it's about damn time. You know? That's what I'm saying. But it's interesting that they're going to use two, and then. <clears throat> Okay, because I know there's a bunch. I don't know, like I don't know that much about the Green Lanterns, other than that people hated when Ryan Reynolds was the Green Lantern. <laughs> I don't. They didn't hate him. It was the it's CGI the, the, right. in that oh, movie. Oh, okay. So yeah. bad. It was the CGI. Gotcha. It, yeah. It did, does look really bad. The whole his entire suit, even the little mask that he wears, is all CGI. It's no bad one complains CGI. about that. In, no one complains about that in the Star Wars prequels. Because it's good CGI. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not okay. It's not the worst, but for for, two, for the time that it came out, for the yeah, time that it came fair. out, it has it not aged well. Best, it has it is some of the best CGI of its time. Yeah, you know what else hasn't aged well? Jimmy Neutron, the show. That CGI was terrible. <laughs> that that's that's different. That's a TV show. <laughs> no, I know. Show, I know. It is. It's, and it it was is now pretty charming bad. and endearing to look back upon. <laughs> I think personally, you're both crazy. It is one of the best TV shows ever. Come oh, out. it's amazing! It's and just doesn't I might look just great. Start re-watching. It just doesn't look great. It's amazing, but it just doesn't look great. That's all. Um. I, anyway, so the next oh, show yeah. on the slate, uh, and no, this is a movie actually. So mm. this is the second movie slated to come out. It okay. is called the Authority. Okay. It's it's the authority and and it is supposed to be like a very big style movie that focuses on a on a a bunch of super powered characters who want to fix the world by any means necessary. Oh my god. It's um, the bad guys in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so this will actually be pretty interesting because, like I said, with uh, DC, there's just so many characters. It's 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 hard to do like smaller scaled stories and like and like a in in a big universe like DC when you're trying to have it be the big universe that it is here. Mm-hmm. So I, in my opinion, I think kind of almost starting off the universe with like a big story like this is kind of a smart move because let's like address all of this stuff here in initially and then once it's resolved if it gets resolved I, i'm i'm hoping it will we can kind of you know like use that as the baseline for all the other stories mm-hmm. we'll be telling here uh but i don't know anything about the uh, Authority or the characters. I know uh, James Gunn said he was drawing uh, heavily from one specific comic run, and after it was announced, it like sold out on Amazon oh. in like a in like a couple of, of of hours here. So interesting. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. The only thing I know about the authority is that you must respect my authority. <laughs> that was a that was a spot on. <laughs> Spot on uh, impression. <laughs> um, RJ, what do you know about this particular storyline? Or do you need to do anything about it? Um, you seem I know to be I've our DC guy. Well, just or, from or more comic. or less a comic guy. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I'm gonna definitely have to look it look it up. Mm-hmm. But it sounds familiar. If it's what I'm thinking of. Well, what do you think it is? Oh, okay. Um, it has been described uh, apparently as uh, James Gunn's passion project. Not sure mm. how accurate that is or if someone's just claiming that or whatever here. Here is the art that was shared. Oh, yeah, uh, host ha- disabled participant screen sharing. You're Thanks, good. host. You're good. Uh, go. Shoot. There we go. Shoot the thrill. Go, 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 go. Um, here it is. Here's the <laughs> here's the image that was sh- shared. So I don't recognize any of those characters off the top of my head, but so like I also don't surfer. necessarily have an expansive <laughs> <laughs> knowledge. I can't remember the um the silver lady's name, but I know she's pretty big. Um, she's definitely got big somethings. <laughs> Wally. The, well, I mean, the other bro, dude... what are you, what are you, they're right there, Brennan. <laughs> That's fair, but um, uh, that guy has no socks on. That's that's kind of weird. I'm assuming yeah. he has like rock themed powers or something, or maybe I'm crazy. Someone in this picture's gotta, or at least levitation. Or, yeah, or there's an explosion happening just off screen. Yeah, I was almost wanting to say that the guy in the the center that kind of looks like Superman without a cape. Um. Oh. Him. I'm thinking he's like a, a white lantern, but I don't see a ring. Interesting. So, yeah. But I'm not sure. This they seem to be pulling a lot of like, lot extremely of deep, obscure uh, characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I've definitely Which, seen... honestly I am down for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of how Marvel got their start, right? I mean, Iron Man was a known character, but it was like kind of like kind of lower some of the lower tier guys and then same with guardians of the galaxy i mean no all of these things that you were saying walter of us um okay well they weren't like the the number one at the time from marvels mm, i don't know what you're talking about wally all there's right. a lot that well there's i'm, a just, lot I'm that... just saying what i've heard not okay what I've... well i'm a daredevil I... pretty much only stan so i love <laughs> me some daredevil that's about all i've ever dipped into the comics is some daredevil and that's some nova fair. And some Nova. That's I really fair. enjoy Nova. But uh, I've definitely not dipped into any DC, so I, I, I can't even begin to describe any of those characters other than that woman is made of steel and there's something on her on our screen. And they were large. I think <laughs> her name is Steel, actually. Um, I can't name. remember, though. That's, that's the great part about DC and Marvel. It's like you can tell which which like who got to what type of character first because like their name is very obvious. <laughs> like yeah. Superman? Oh, yes. This man has superpowers. Call him... Superman. Yep. Man is a bat. <laughs> Call him Batman. Bat. <laughs> he he has a villain who is a man who transformed in 
to a bat or to use the name Batman. What can we call him? <laughs> Is he man, man bat. bat. <laughs> <laughs> man bat. <laughs> um, so all right. anyway, don't you have to you so Brendan, you, that, you're on a you're on a time crunch. So yeah, I'm gonna have to like I have a hard stop at like 8 30 here. Okay. 8 30 of an unnamed t- t- time zone. All you listeners here don't think you're gonna get an edge knowing what my schedule is like. <laughs> um because we still uh, have to talk about Star Wars visions, which is a quite quite a long conversation as well. So yes, uh not really. I a haven't lot seen any. I don't know the studio names, but I did see. Oh, all but the I, but I I, I the have studio. the studio names and I have what they've worked on. So you'll okay, have some okay. you'll have some thoughts okay. when I tell them cool. tell you. Well, anyway, so the next uh project is an HBO Max live action show that has been described as having a Game of Thrones style, and so it is going to suck. Paradise is fucking lost. Um, I uh, to be determined, I guess, based on on uh, the on the rating here. But it is called uh, Paradise Lost. It is a series based around the island of Mascara. Uh, oh, which okay. Interesting. You might know from being home to Wonder Woman here. So yeah. it is important, I think, in my mind that it's, it's, this hasn't been described as like a Wonder Woman show. It's a show about the island itself and the people who are on the island here. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm not sure cool. if it, like, like mm-hmm. it, if it predates you Wonder Woman. If Wonder Woman will still have some involvement, but it is definitely not a Wonder Woman centric show. It just focuses on the island, which I think is cool because I don't think we've really explored that almost at 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 all here recently we spent a lot of time there i think in wonder woman one but that was kind of a little bit yeah a little bit of time i think they spent more time there in wonder woman 1984 than they did in the first one yeah i actually don't remember a lot of 1984 that movie was not good (laughs) i just remember the um, it was an interesting take the trial to become i guess become wonder woman at the beginning Oh yeah, uh, I do remember that. You're right. Yeah. Maybe that's the scene I'm 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 remembering. Yeah, that was that. in number two, not number one. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, but that, that's yeah, cool. it'll be interesting. That'll be cool. Yeah. To see. Mm-hmm. All right, next okay. one. The next thing is uh <laughs> a is is a live action movie called The Brave and the Bold. Ooh. Um, well, I it's, interesting. Yes. It is uh the uh first batman movie we'll have in the new dceu mm-hmm. um and it focuses on batman and his son damian wayne oh Ooh. no i saw a lot of people were mad that they're skipping over a robin but to them i say i don't care <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm just, robin, I'm just pumped to have a live action robin, robin back we haven't had live action robin since, since the bad movies think, in the 90s right? yeah <laughs> yeah that's fair yeah so yeah that'll be that'll be cool um Yep. I wonder and, what age you'll start this Robin at. Uh, from, from from what I've seen, it'll be pretty young. Okay. Because also, uh, with this movie, it uh, it it apparently is drawing like heavily from the comic run of the ex- of the exact same name, and I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure in there, Damian Wayne was like pretty young. Mm-hmm. And so. it's like yeah, one of the most like famous, like yeah, one of the most yeah. famous Batman runs, right? Brave and the Bold. I don't know actually because I like I don't was a show? really know Raven the Bold. I know the show. show. Was really- yeah, the show was probably okay. That's what it was. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. They did do. I think they did do a comic run after, like either after or during the show was coming out. Mm-hmm. But it was a Cartoon Network show, so it was gotcha. more gotcha. geared yeah. toward than it okay, was. So that, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be interesting if they do the same thing, or if they make it kind of a little bit darker, if they kind of make it a little lighter. It'll be. It, it, it's interesting for sure. Yeah. 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 It apparently is supposed to be like a dark show because from all the stuff that I've heard about Damian Damian Wayne, he's kind of an intense kid. <laughs> I very intense does not even begin to describe it. <laughs> but that would be cool to finally see. Yeah. 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 So the next one. Uh yes. Yeah, so um this is actually a really interesting one because as soon as this was announced, I was like, I know this character uh wally do you remember how legends of tomorrow 
ended here. It has yeah, been a while. I, I don't remember exactly how I uh, described it. I do. But I, they I were remember basically how you told me it ended. All, yeah, they were basically all arrested, all thrown in jail because this new character kind of popped up and he got them in trouble because he was this just this like absolute l- l- loser of a guy who basically sort of stole the time machine, uh, went he, he back in time, impressed a bunch of people with the tech and then returned to them. And then they got Booster them all Gold? Uh, arrested. Yep, it was Booster Gold and Legends of Tomorrow. He got them all screwed. <laughs> and we're now getting oh a live God. action Booster Gold show on HBO oh. Max. <laughs> I, I can't tell oh. if he's like in favor of that or if he's like, oh my God, no. I'm I'm like, so Booster Gold is like a guilty pleasure character of mine. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think he's so dumb. He's so dumb. But so is this, so this going to add to the goofiness of like the tone that they've kind of started to set already? Like part it of probably, like, the tone of like, part of the, sh- well. the, the DC. You cannot, you can't have Booster Gold and have a serious story. I don't think <laughs> because he's he's literally just like <laughs> if you if you've ever like seen or I've or, ne- I've never heard of this anything, character, so I'm gonna look him up right now. If you well, I was gonna say if you know who Johnny Cage is from the Mortal Kombat series. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, that's basically. Booster Gold, but if he were to go back in time with gotcha. all the same personality, where it's like Playboy and you just oh is just money hungry and so, fame hungry. So there was apparently original there was a there was a comic run, there's a limited series of blue it's called Blue and Gold, and it was Blue Beetle and and uh Booster Gold. Oh yeah, interesting. interesting. Yeah, but I yeah, definitely, I think, uh, in, the, I think in the Young Justice show, they're like really cl- the those two characters are really close too mm, was booster gold in the young justice show I, I actually maybe it wasn't young just remember him i think it might have been might have been something else but i i do i i remember i remember blue beetle and booster gold interacting for he was in justice league, justice league action it says here the show justice i league action. don't see him in young justice Okay, it was. It that, must have been. It'd have been neat if, if, if like he, he had been. Yeah, there's probably he some, was in some live other action. project. Just, it might have been one of those one off, one off animated movies or something. Uh, Apparently, Nathan Fillion yeah. wants to play Booster Gold. That's hilarious. I think he would be perfect for that. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, what a, what uh, a so continue, continue. Buddy. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like yeah, all I was going to say for, for Booster Gold is is like his whole vibe is like he basically was just some loser in the future who just took a time machine back in time with just a lot of c- cool technology and became a superhero in the past. Cuz all this <laughs> technology was like awesome even though he like is just That's... some loser f- from the future. So I am <laughs> that'll be an, that'll be a really really interesting show. Okay. Um, and that brings us to the next project, which is Super Girl Woman of Tomorrow. Oh, and uh, this has the take of Supergirl that I've always found super interesting. There have been like multiple takes, I'm pretty sure. But uh, this is the one where she wasn't sent to Earth. She uh, grew up on a chunk of planet Krypton after, you know, Sure. Um, and uh, <laughs> she watched all of the people around her die, saw all this destruction, and she comes to Earth with that backstory instead of Superman's backstory of, oh, yeah, sent away safely, grew up nice and happy and, and, and everything. So Supergirl in this story is a much more jaded character. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah, and I'm excited to just see that um, because that's kind of what they were doing in Young Justice. Not necessarily wanting to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen Young Justice all the way through, but that was what they were doing with her in that one. And I'm very interested to see more of that story, especially if Young Justice does not continue, which it will continue. They better renew Young Justice. It's like my favorite (laughs) DC project of all time, so... (laughs) Knocking on wood here, but I don't need to because they're going to renew it. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> that show has survived so much. It's been canceled like what, like three times now, <laughs> and it's yeah. still around. So, all right. Uh, 
Um, and that brings us to the last project here, unless anyone has any the one I've been, questions about that. The one I've been trying to get to, because like this is the, the other piece okay. of news. There, I have three pieces of news, and then two of them are both DC, and this is the, this is related to the last one. Nice, nice. Okay, so the very last project announced, not necessarily all of the Gods and Monsters arc, I don't think, but this is the very last thing that's been announced for right now, is Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. Okay, so haven't they tried this before? Or was I that, there was that man thing that they tried to do? Because I know that they're like the same character, just one's Marvel, one's DC. Which we saw man thing earlier last year, or like later last year in uh, yeah, yeah, Halloween it was one, special. It was one thing. It was a okay, C- yeah, CW did. show. Oh, there's a show too? I was, I was thinking of a movie, but okay. Oh yeah, there was, was it? Well, I can't remember. I, I just there know was a the... show for the character. Okay. okay. No, and yeah. like, and this is a movie. Or Wally, a you show? also write that like Marvel and DC. I, I'm. It it might be Swamp Thing where like I know they have two very similar characters of the exact same name. And yes, it, Man Swing, Man no. Thing, and Swamp Thing. Man Thing is DC. Marvel Swamp Thing is DC. Yeah. Okay. So the rumor, the 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 piece of news I have for this, it's rumored that the director of Logan is in talks to direct Swamp Thing. Which I think is a big That's piece of news. Don't I mean, spoil yeah. Logan for me because I still haven't watched it. I'm getting there. Have you really slowly... not watched Logan? Me, no, and, me I'm, and I'm trying to watch all of the X Men movies. I've watched the first three now. Gotcha. Me and the uh, first RJ time. I had never seen ago. it. I had never seen an, an, an X Men movie before, like a couple months back. When I finally watched the first one, I've seen the first three now. I watched slowly trying to work pandemic. my way to Ooh. Oh, again. Yeah, me and me and RJ did a. Uh... Did a did an episode on Logan a couple months ago when we were doing our doing our uh real shit show. Oh Which, yeah. If we can, if we ever get a chance to get back to doing that, I would love to. But because I need, yeah, I need a so. reason to watch movies because I don't watch very many movies. <laughs> I, I still haven't seen Black thing. Panther yet. Oh, or the new one. Oh man, I know. Oh, man. And now, like I have no. Excuse You've got to watch it. Yeah, it is on <laughs> Disney Plus now. Yeah, it is. But, uh, anyway, so that's all oh. I have. That's one thing, and or like in terms of news. But uh, opinions are welcome, obviously. I will. I will absolutely say, with Black Panther, I did go back and recently rewatch the first Black Panther movie after having seen a these second one. And like Black Panther one is still such a phenomenal movie. And not saying at all that like. Panther 2 was a bad movie, but like I just wish it could have had that exact same vibe as Black Panther 1 because Black Panther 1 was incredible. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, I was going to say, we could go over that in a, um, a real shit episode since you haven't hey. seen it yet. Well, incredible. Yeah, I, that's I, a I've, great I've, wanted to, I've wanted to talk about that movie with somebody for a while. Yeah, well, for sure. Lot. Let's let's we'll, we'll we'll plan to do that because uh, I do want to bring real shit back. That was that was a fun show to do. I really enjoyed talking about movies and stuff with you. So, um, so that's that's it on DC news. Which mm-hmm. man, that 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 was a long long segment. It's been was, like two hours. <laughs> There's just so much to say about. You know? Truly, I, truly, I will say I am okay with holding off on Bad Batch until the next episode if we. Want to just hold off on Bad Batch and just? I, th- I think I think we may have to just just based just, yeah. because, just based on you know what we've had to do here, um, just to get through oh, visions because there's a lot of there's there's a lot there's only nine things for visions I say only but like when you hear what each studio has done you're gonna be like what is going to happen with this show because yeah. okay so <laughs> let's let's preface well, with this Ep- and yeah go ahead actually yeah just before that let me tie a nice little bow onto the whole DC <laughs> thing here and then we can move on off of it because the last thing that I, w- I wanted to add is is you know like we still have the last few dc movies of the old mm-hmm. Snyder verse or whatever uh that are releasing here this year i think aquaman's the last one at the very end of the year in like a mm-hmm. december here uh but then i don't know exactly when the shows will start but the superman movie that kind of like of- officially marks the relaunch of dc Currently has a release date of, let me find that I just had it, of July 11th, 2025. Okay, so they're doing what we said that they should have done and taking a little break. Yeah. They like, have to take a break uh, right now because they're just they're rebooting some, everything. They're taking yeah, a small a break small so break, they can like yeah. finally focus and get into the meat of the of, of what the DCEU should be. 
And uh, I think that, that's that's awesome for DC fans. Like, I'm really happy for them because Marvel fans have been reveling in it for the past decade and a half. And now DC's yeah. fans are finally getting <laughs> their chance to do it. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy yeah. for that. Um, <clears throat> So with that, Star Wars Visions, uh, we got an announcement. Uh, Star Season 2 will start streaming on May 4th and will be created by nine different studios from across the world instead of just Japan wow. this time. Uh, the first season was all anime, all was all Japanese studios. It was phenomenal. Season 1 was fantastic. Probably yeah. some of the best Star Wars content we've gotten in a long time. Uh, it is even... Oh, yeah. Uh, there's even a comic book going on right now about some of the... I think there's a comic run that's uh, about some of the... It expands upon some of the vision episodes. And there's also a book by Emma, by Emma Miko Cannon or Candon called uh, Ronin, which is based on the first one. The book's pretty good. I didn't, I didn't love it, but I thought it was really good. Expanded upon star Wars lore uh, and definitely dove more into the Japanese roots of, of, of the story and of star Wars as well. Sweet. Yeah. But man, the studios even announced are really weird. So first I'm going to list the studios and then I'm going to tell you, go back and tell you what they've each done. So it's going to be cartoon saloon. Um, <laughs> Punk Robot Studios, Studio Mir, Journey Journey to the Dark, no, sorry, Ardman Studios, Triggerfish, which might sound familiar to some people, uh, Studio La, che- La Cachette, 88 Pictures, and El, El, El Giri Studios. So I didn't recognize any of those. So let's start with the first one. Cartoon Saloon mm-hmm. is respond. They they made Wolf Walkers, which is an Apple TV Plus original, and My Father's Dragon, which is on Netflix. I've heard amazing things about Wolf Walkers. So it's supposed to be like one of the was was really good. It's an interesting yeah. animated animation style. Um, but uh, they're an Irish studio. They're out of uh, Kilkenny, Ireland. Let me um, look. So- at- oh, that's a cool animation style. Yeah, it is. I actually um, like that. And so it'll be interesting to see Star Wars in there. Uh, yeah. their, oh. Oh, their, uh, their 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 episode has been called Screechers Reach, uh, which I which mm-hmm. I would imagine maybe like bounty hunter esque, in a way. Yeah. Um. So that'd be interesting. Uh, the next one is Punk Robot Studios. Their big one. They're a Chilean studio. Uh, their big one. They don't really have very many things in English, but their big movie is uh, Nah Nahuel and the Magic Book. How's that um, spelled? Nahuel, N A H U E L. And the magic book. <laughs> I can't. I, I hope you know how to spell and the magic book. Uh, you are overestimating me, Wally. <laughs> but I'm um, just kidding. Okay. I, I do That's plan on watching each style. of these in their original language, like I did with the Japanese. Books. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, because there'll be unique original languages for each of these right. now instead of just, yes, instead of Japanese just probably. watching them all in Japanese. Um, mm. so and they will have an episode called In the Stars. <laughs> And and I will also like uh, preface all of this like uh, with saying that like my first reaction when I saw the announced studios studios was like oh cool they're gonna be more like anime studios can't wait to see more of that like anime vibe because like I I really did like seeing all of the Star Wars episodes in like different anime vibes and styles and I was looking at the list and I showed it to Lauren I was like I don't think these are anime studios here so I didn't really know what to expect. And like, so it'll be it'll be interesting for me as I look up all these different art styles because mm-hmm. not not to say at all that like anime is one style because you know yeah. as we saw with Visions season one, tons of of different styles there oh, yeah. and oh, and, yeah. and all of them were, were phenomenal and uh, <laughs> unique. So I I am like bummed out that we're moving a, a bit away from that style here, but I am all in for seeing more of these. Uh, still unique st- st- uh, styles yeah uh, and just just to kind of remark anime is such a such a unique and 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 probably overlooked art style like art like medium of entertainment and they st- mm-hmm. they tell such vibrant and deep stories in it, using anime and i really wish star wars would get i wish we could like get like a like one like one story in an anime form instead of just a couple different like short episodes because I mean, the with the depth of storytelling you can do with Star Wars and with anime, it'd just be absolutely incredible. Yeah, um, and I know RJ can speak to that because I know he watches a lot of anime, and I've definitely gotten into anime the last couple of years. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> the next one, Studio Mir, they did Batman. Th- so they're out of South Korea, and they are famous for Batman and Superman: Battle of the Super Sons. That mm. is what they're famous for, uh, which I did not know is uh, by a Korean studio. Um. 
there is going to do I... Journey into the Dark Head. Oh, that's um, an interesting style. I yes. do think I've seen this advertised somewhere mm -hmm. uh, beforehand. That's a. It is a little closer to anime, but it's not quite style. Quite there. yeah. Um, yeah, like it's like almost like a three D anime yeah esque thing. Almost like almost like uh uh the Marvel show. What if? Yeah, like yeah. yeah, it it does look 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 a lot like what if, which mm -hmm. like what if was always too 3D to, to my liking here, and this is mm -hmm. kind of also the same thing where I'm like, it's a little too 3D for me, but <laughs> it's it like right in the still uncanny valley. Interesting, huh? It's like right in the uncanny valley. Yeah, yeah. So this this is <laughs> this, when I saw this, I was like, okay, let me look this up. And I saw what this next studio was famous for. I was like, holy shit, we're finally getting this in Star Wars. Is this the one? The next that, one is Ardman Studios. Ardman Studios is based out of England or the United Kingdom. Yep, and they are famous for Wallace and Gromit and Shaun the Sheep and Chicken. Oh, so my we're goodness. finally so yep. we're gonna get uh uh claymation Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And boy, yeah. I saw that I and I was like, thoughts. this I was, I was like, this <laughs> is gonna yeah. be this is gonna be something here, and I am I am down for just seeing what this spits out because the, this... the name of the episode is I Am Your Mother. <laughs> <laughs> that already sounds great. That so sounds this great. one, I'm just so interested to see how they're gonna do this because yeah. these are two things I never thought I'd ever see together: was Star Wars and claymation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially the goofy ass claymation that they do. Yeah, this is either gonna be the greatest thing ever or the worst thing ever, whichever <laughs> it ends up being. I don't care. I'm watching all of it. I, I'm yeah. gonna watch shit of it. Because if it's not if it's not good, it'll be eventually a, like a cult classic thing. Oh, yes, for sure. yes. Well, like Chicken Run <laughs> or Wallace exactly. and Gromit. I mean, I remember yeah. growing up and watching oh, Chicken Run, and that was like, yeah, right? and, and it's, it's 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 weird. Like I have fond memories of it, and it's also a fever dream. <laughs> that movie. Same. I I was a little terrified of Chicken Run the first time I saw it. I'm, Me wow. too. So I do. I saw that, yeah. and I saw people in the comments like, "Oh man, this is." I'm like, "Really?" And like, I looked up like, "Oh my god, this is the Wallace and Gromit yeah. company." <laughs> like I actually have no idea how like every buddy saw the the Chicken Run movie it had to have some kind of incredible advertising because I, I believe it was my grandparents who got me like the DVD of it when I was like super small and like they they would exclusively buy things that they saw advertised so it had to have one one heck of a of of uh, of a marketing campaign well, for like so, everybody who uh, had the same shared experience I did of watching it and being like, what did I just watch? <laughs> <laughs> so do you remember when uh, when you mm. used to be able to buy VHS tapes and they came with ads on it and you couldn't skip them? Do you mean do you remember that or VHS they could have been DVDs, v DVDs, yeah. VHS, whatever? No, it, it was DVDs because DVDs were always the ones you couldn't skip. VHS That's tapes right. I loved because you could fast forward VHS tapes no no matter what. There was That's no true. way to That's block fast forwarding, but. Chicken Ooh. Run was one of those ads. I don't remember what movie we had. We had a movie and Chicken Run was the ad. And so yeah. I remember watching Chicken Run. I remember seeing the ad a million times because whatever it was, I, I whatever we whatever it was that I watched, that's a, I just had to watch that ad every time. So <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I'm so, so interested to see what they're going to do with this. So uh, the <laughs> next one is Trigger Fish. They don't really have anything that's like big here in the United States. They have a couple of Netflix things. The biggest one being a, a, a movie about a zebra called Kumba. Uh, they're South African. How's it spelled? It's K H U M B A. Um, it's kind of Kumba. It's like really polished. Too. It's like Why super it polished three D. It's like DreamWorks if they polished everything to a T. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's actually that's what it looks like a, a lot of here. So is, it's going to be really gorgeous wait, animation, but I'm not really sure what to expect story-wise. Is Kumba kind of like just Madagascar here? Because I just <laughs> did a quick search and a lot of the search results are just comparisons of Kumba to Madagascar. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> I don't know. It's on Netflix. Um, or that or the other movie they did is on Netflix. Both are about African animals, I think. Which makes sense. It's a South African studio, but uh, that'll be really cool to see. It's gonna be beautiful, whatever it, whatever it is. Um, just from seeing the what the animation is. The next one. Okay. Next one's little, oh, and they're gonna there's gonna honestly be called Owl's song. Oh, sweet. That's yeah, I, I, I was saying. Called. 
honestly, after scrolling through, I think people are only comparing this because they're both about animals, and that's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like that. Remember that movie, uh, the The Wild, which is like Disney's version of Yeah, yeah, uh, Madagascar. But that movie sucked hardcore. <laughs> that and Valiant, yeah, were bad movies. Remember Valiant? What about the pigeon? Oh man, I, I try to forget I about the movie. <laughs> I think everyone does, dude. That Disney, they had a lot of misses, but like no one remembers them, so that's okay. Um, dude, that's the thing about Disney wait. when they have this, it's so forgettable that it's yeah. just like, man, it's fine that this happened because that yeah. because they hit so many other times. But what's up? Yeah, that's- uh, in like uh the uh in like the English uh. Or is she in this movie here? Because I'm assuming there are are multiple versions, and I I might Probably. be ooh, wrong about that. But at, at least in the English version, uh, guess who voiced the main character who? in a uh, Kumba? Zebra, it was right? Liam Neeson. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just looking at it. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's Liam Neeson. Interesting. <sighs> but uh, so yeah, there's there's gonna be Aou's song, A U apostrophe S song. So that'd be interesting you, to see. Um, you already one, know what question, yeah, I'm about to ask about the next one here. Is the next what one movie? is called Dart Staugio. I don't really know how to say that. I apologize for butchering it. So they exclusively do music videos. They have oh. done a music video for uh, uh, Sturgill Simpson, The Weeknd, the, the music video for Snow Child by The Weeknd, music video for Sound and Fury by Sturgill Simpson, and the music video for the song Thinkin' by Bad Bunny, Unwell, Dubla, Spiff, and Future, which I'm very familiar with that song. Very good song. Very good music video as well. Wow. That's some big artists. That's some very big artists. Um, yeah. So they're a Japanese oh, that's an American. Oh, oh that like, is there are an a bunch of interesting. Live in Japan. Art style. It's almost anime again. Yeah, like a little bit more I mean, polished. A little yeah, bit more like, American influence. And and it is really compatible with Star Wars and some stuff I'm seeing here. There's like I like I just looked up the Sonoe Child music video stills. Yeah. And mm-hmm. there's one of the weekend ho- holding like sticks of light. It looks like oh, yeah, a yeah. Lightsa- <laughs> like, it looks like lightsabers. Yeah, like you can just drag and drop that basically in a Star Wars, and it looks like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. The Jedi, uh, the Jedi Master, the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the episode of this, of this episode. That's the name of this episode, Jedi Master, the weekend. Anyway, um, and final, and there's two more studio. Uh, there's there. Uh, I think it's going to be called The Pit. I'm going to be interested to see if they add music to it. It might be a music yeah. album for Star Wars. That'll be interesting. Um, And then the next one is Studio La Cachette, which is a French, French? studio, and they're most well-known for yes. their installment of Love, uh, Lo- Love, Death, and Robots, which is like a critically acra- acclaimed oh, yeah. animated show. Um, Kind of the same style as this, where it's a bunch of different studios kind of getting together, making sci-fi stories. Um. And there's there's gonna be called the Spy Dancer, and uh, which oh I forgot sorry Spy Dancer because V isn't a word to Brennan, um, <clears throat> and then uh, eighty eight pictures, uh, they have so they're an Indian based company but they don't they haven't really done like any movies or anything they just kind of do like advertisement reels they've done advertisement reels for Scoob, Rise of the Titans and Smallfoot, so that'll be interesting, interesting. those are all like three D animated shows so it'll be interesting to see that. Um, no, and then find cool. and there's their movies we call their little shorts we call the bandits the galak, um. So it'll be interesting to see the Indian influence there, and which we have not seen very we've which we have seen period in Star Wars, um. So that'll be interesting. And then finally, yeah. uh, Spain El El Giri Studios, which I could not find a single thing they've ever done. Oh, that's awesome. But they're gonna they're gonna have something <laughs> called the Sith. Oh, cool. So we'll get some Sith lore and whatnot, but. Sweet. uh yeah, so that's all <laughs> on this on the vision side. I, I I think we're all probably the most excited for the Ardman Studios. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's I'm excited for that one, and I'm excited for the uh, Chilean one. Um, I'm a little biased though because Latino. So, um, RJ, do you have any that you're particularly excited about? 
I mean, all of these sound really, really interesting. I've never heard of a lot of those. I th- I don't think any of those really. Um, I guess the except for Chicken Run. Wall- yeah, the Wallace and Gromit <laughs> Chicken one. That one, I didn't know the name of it, but Ardman Studios. Yeah. Yeah, that sounded familiar, but that's I've that's, heard of Triggerfish sounds... before, but I don't know why. Yeah, I think it sounds I think familiar. Might, I think we're thinking of Trigger from like Kill oh, Kill and right. Kevin Logan. You're right, because that's what I thought at first. I thought they're that... an anime studio, right? Yeah, Trigger yeah. is an anime studio. So studio, hey, studio you know. Trigger, right? And they did two of the last ones. In the first, yeah, they one. did. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Did. That's probably what I'm thinking of. A trigger oh. fish is a type of fish I have now uh, discovered here. <laughs> that is true. It is also a type of fish. It is a trigger fish. Um, Brennan, are you excited for any in particular? Or are you just kind of like RJ? Just kind of in general so excited? I'm just excited in general. I really liked the first Star Wars Visions. I am excited for this upcoming one. So, Yeah. Yeah, okay. it'll be really interesting seeing I mean, it always is interesting seeing seeing content be made in different mediums mm-hmm. that you, you you really wouldn't think about them being made into. You know? and, and, I mean, but, the, the music video one is interesting. Yes. I, I, I really hope it actually is like a music video Star Wars thing. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. It's like a, like a four or five minute, you know, music video. It's, a, just it's the music time. video for the most of these canteen song i want that so bad <laughs> <laughs> it's just a music video for the they just do that for the whole like five minutes just that but it's the best music video you'll ever see it's like it's like it like wins grammys for best music video oh yeah oh yeah um yeah, that, that one's super interesting when I saw that, especially when I saw Thinking, because I've watched the music video a million times. It's a great song. Word. Um, like like <laughs> the tagline, like the chorus starts, I'm pretty sure the first couple songs are, I fuck reality stars, the pussy is good. Like that's like the first nice. line in the song. <laughs> no, nice. I like that. And I think it's Future who sings that because the other ones don't, I don't think the other rappers speak English. And the Spiff is mm. pretty well known, so. Well, I cannot find where I know Triggerfish from or why it sounds familiar. Well, we just we to just me. said well, we know Elf to you. Yeah, okay. yeah, like you know why for y'all. I trigger, yeah, yeah. I have I have no idea why it sounds <laughs> familiar to me. Maybe you're just secretly into fish. Yep, that <laughs> has to be it. <laughs> Brennan has to seek continue reporting. Jesus. Uh there's a I'll figure that out later, but as uh, we'll just let's just cool. finish it up. Yeah. Everyone, thank you guys for joining. RJ, thank you for being on the show huh? today. We will figure out what uh what we're gonna do moving forward with real shit. Brennan, as yeah. always, thank you for being here. If you guys like this episode, don't forget to You're follow welcome. me on don't forget to Wally, follow me on you are welcome. YouTube. I do this for you for you. <laughs> I am I am I am here for you, but I'm just honored to be included as now the co-host of a podcast for the past two years now two years is wild, that right? i know yeah, yeah. it's like two and a half years we started this yep. in like september of 2020 but yes this has been a fun thing so i appreciate never mind i i'm just gonna end this joke i'm i'm, I'm no longer gonna stall you ending the podcast here but <laughs> thank you guys for listening if you like this episode go subscribe to my youtube channel subscribe to wherever you're listening to this my youtube channel is wolf gator entertainment go subscribe to brennan at not brennan um <laughs> Uh, okay. I don't know follow why us on, that. Follow now us I feel on Instagram. A responsible. Follow, don't follow RJ on anything. He's in space right now. He can't even get to his phone. He doesn't know where it is. <laughs> and we thank you guys. We will continue this at some other time. See ya. Peace. Peace.